in today's video i want to talk about tropical revolving storms uh, what we also call as trs trs is nothing but an intense area of low pressure where the associated maximum wind speed is at least greater than 64 knots that is about beaufort force 12. now in today's video i'll talk about the theory behind the formation of the trs and in the next video i will talk about how or what techniques can mariners or seafarers use on ships to avoid these TRS. Now, of course, depending upon the region of the world, uh, the TRS is known by its different names in different regions of the world. For example, in the Western North Pacific, it is called a typhoon. In India, it's called a cyclone. And in Australia, it's called a tropical cyclone. By international agreement, tropical cyclone is the general term for all hurricane type storms that originate over tropical waters. However, sometimes for simplicity, many organizations refer to these storms as hurricanes. This is what a satellite picture of a hurricane or a tropical revolving storm looks like. This is of Typhoon John with winds at about 100 knots near its eye. And this is of a typhoon called Tip, which was one of the intense storms in the 1970s and 80s with a central pressure of less than 870 hectopascals and winds gusting at about 165 knots. But these are all satellite based pictures. In the weather facsimile that you get on your ship, you can see this is how a tropical storm or cyclone is denoted by. If you see your top left hand screen, you can see the cyclone is mentioned there by the name. TC Monty, which stands for Tropical Cyclone Monty. The pressure at its center and its direction movement is shown on the weather facsimile. Some of the common terms associated with the TRS include the path, which refers to the direction in which it is moving. The track is the area over which the storm center has traversed. The vertex, which is the furthest westerly point reached by the storm center. The angle of indraft, which is the angle which the wind makes with the isobars. The vortex is the central calm of the storm. You can see there is a vortex and there is a vortex. Make sure that you note the difference between these two terms. Then we have the dangerous semicircle, which is the half of the storm, which lies to the right of the path in northern hemisphere and left of the path in southern hemisphere. We have the dangerous quadrant, which is the leading portion of the dangerous semicircle, where the winds blow towards the path. We have the navigable semicircle, which is the half of the storm, which lies to the left of the path in the northern hemisphere and right of the path in the southern hemisphere. And finally, we have a trough line, which is a line through the center of the storm at right angles to its path and dividing line between falling and rising pressure. I will show you some of these terms in a diagram or a separate figure later on. In terms of organization or for development of a tropical cyclone, you have to remember that uh, in the tropics, which is the region about 23 and half degree north and south of the equator, the weather is much different from the middle latitudes. In the tropics, the noon sun is always high in the sky and so diurnal and seasonal changes in temperature are small. The daily heating of the surface and high humidity favor the development of cumulus clouds and afternoon thunderstorms. Most of these are individual thunderstorms that are not severe. Sometimes, however, they group together into loosely organized systems. On other occasions, the thunderstorms will align into a row of vigorous convective cells known as squall lines. The passage of a squall line is usually noted by a sudden wind gust followed immediately by a heavy downpour. Now, over a period of time, these tropical cyclones or these tropical thunderstorms start to become organized, forming closed isobars within which the latent heat released from the clouds start to fuel the tropical storm. Winds start to increase in speed and the pressure starts to drop steadily. Finally, in one of the stages, this organized system of thunderstorms turns into a cyclone or a hurricane with a closed cyclonic system around a central core with winds exceeding 64 knots, which then is termed as a hurricane. So you can see here how the isobars over a period of time turn or rather not uh, become a closed system uh, using the thunderstorms and the latent heat released from the clouds and the rains and turn into a tropical cyclone. 
Now the TRS formed due to the instability of the atmosphere at the convergence of the intertropical front where the trade winds meet. It is also known as the area ITCZ. Energy of a TRS depends upon the latent heat released by the condensation of the water vapor. Hence its development depends upon an abundant supply of water. TRS mainly occur over eastern edges of continents where the trade winds have journeyed for a long passage over water with high sea surface temperature at least 26.5 degrees Celsius. TRS never originate over land. Since the whirling motion in a TRS is caused by Coriolis force which is released at the equator, TRS are more likely to form in late summer when the tropical front is situated some distance away from the equator. That is July to October in the northern hemisphere and January to April in the southern hemisphere. TRS do not form in southern Atlantic because the intertropical front seldom moves sufficiently south of the equator. Hence, the six main ingredients or the big six contributing to the formation is as shown on your screens. Now, the winds in the tropics generally blow from the east, that is northeast or southeast. Because the variation of sea level pressure is normally quite small, drawing isobars on a weather map provides little useful information. Instead of isobars, we have streamlines that depict wind flow. Streamlines are useful because they show where surface air converges and diverges. Occasionally, the streamlines will be disturbed by a weak trough of low pressure called a tropical wave or a easterly wave. Tropical waves have a wavelength on the order of about 2500 km and travel from east to west at speeds of about 10 to 20 knots. What you see on the screen are some of the easterly waves or a tropical wave, also called an easterly wave, and they are formed by the bending of the streamlines that show wind flow patterns. The heavy dashed line is the axis of the trough. The wave moves slowly westward, bringing fair weather on its western side and showers on the eastern side. On the eastern side, where the southerly, southeasterly winds converge, rising air generates showers and thunderstorms. Consequently, the main areas of shower forms behind the trough. Occasionally, an easterly wave will intensify and grow into a hurricane. And this is what I was talking about initially. So you can see here the intertropical convergence zone or the ITCZ is shown. And here the easterly trade winds converge to trigger numerous tropical storms. The troughs of low pressure called tropical or easterly waves in trade wind flow. The converging winds on eastern side of the easterly waves trigger tropical storms. Middle latitude cold fronts moving to lower latitudes cause the convergence of air. Now what you see here is a model that shows a vertical view of air motions and clouds in a typical hurricane in the northern hemisphere. This diagram is somewhat exaggerated in the vertical. Now what you see here is that a hurricane is composed of an organized mass of thunderstorms that are an integral part of the storm circulation. Near the surface, moist tropical air flows in towards the hurricane center. Adjacent to the eye, this air rises and condenses into huge cumulonimbus nimbus clouds that produce heavy rainfall. Near the top of the clouds, the relatively dry air, having lost much of its moisture, begin to flow outward from the center. This diverging air aloft actually produces a clockwise flow of air several hundred kilometers from the eye. As this outflow reaches the storm's periphery, it begins to sink and warm inducing clear skies. In the vigorous convection clouds of the eye wall, the air warms due to the release of large quantities of latent heat. This produces slightly higher pressures aloft which initiate downward air motion within the eye. As the air subsides, it warms by compression. This process helps to account for the warm air and the absence of thunderstorms in the eye of the storm. As the surface air rushes in towards the region of much lower surface pressure, it should expand and cool, and we might expect to observe cooler air around the eye. 
with warmer air further away but apparently so much heat is added to their air from the warm ocean surface that the surface air temperature remains fairly uniform throughout the hurricane so now you would know why the tropical storms form only in the areas shown in red and not in other areas because these are the only areas where the six conditions of a tropical cyclone formation are fulfilled like i said before in example tropical cyclone or tropical revolving storms do not form in the south atlantic because the intertropical front seldom moves sufficiently south of the equator they also don't form in certain tropical regions due to cold currents or cold water so the tropical cyclone cannot sustain in cold water or there is not there is such a less coriolis force that winds can't get sufficient rotation to converge in the itcz and large values of vertical wind shear disrupt the organization of the thunderstorms they do not allow their thunderstorms to form an organized circulation and they break it apart before it can convert into a hurricane here you can see a typical anatomy of a tropical storm now what you see uh, as the eye is in the center of the tropical storm next to the eye we also have the eye wall so the eye is up to 500 km in diameter the eye is the most notable feature with clear calm conditions and surrounding the eye we have the eye wall with the strongest winds and rainfall and the eye wall is surrounded by spiral rain bands this is a satellite picture showing you the formation of the eye and the eye wall around it if you see here that the area of broken clouds at the center is its eye so the clouds are not there inside the eye that is why the weather is very clear so i is roughly circular with light winds mostly no clouds lowest surface pressure and warmest temperature aloft size is about uh, over 200 km generally between 30 to 60 km and i wall is a circular rotating region with intense thunderstorms up to a tropopause which is about 15 to 18 km from the sea level and they have highest surface winds with spiraling rain bands the air converges at the surface ascends through the spiral rain bands diverges aloft and descends on both sides of the band and i have talked about this before in the previous diagram so i will not repeat it again otherwise this lecture becomes too long for you what you see here is again a pretty much a repetition of what i have told you before on how the cloud formation around the eye wall takes place and why the center of the eye is clear of cloud formation so you can see the heavy cumulonimbus clouds are the reason that the latent heat is released due to the cloud formation as well as the rain and this latent heat continues to fuel the tropical revolving storm throughout its journey here is the barograph trace showing when a subtropical cyclone center passes over a stationary observer so as you can see the pressure initially drops and then once the trs passes over the pressure starts to rise again here you can see the location and the curving pattern of a tropical cyclone in the northern hemisphere as well in the southern hemisphere so you can see that the cyclone curves northeasterly in the northern hemisphere and southeasterly in the southern hemisphere now the movement of a trs is variable and individual tracks may be quite erratic the initial track in lower latitudes is generally from east to west in general however in the northern hemisphere a trs is likely to move within 30 degrees of due west near 25 degrees north latitude trs usually recurve away from the equator and their next movement is always northeasterly this point of recurvature is called vertex as we discussed before in the southern hemisphere you can see the initial movement is usually between west southwest and south southwest the storms often recurve between 15 degrees south and 20 degrees south latitude and their next movement is southeast many storms do not recurve but continue west northwest in the northern hemisphere and west southwest in the southern hemisphere 
the rate of movement of a TRS is generally less than 15 knots, but after recurving, they may accelerate to 25 to 30 knots or more. And that's why you have to be very, you have to be wary of the tropical cyclone that starts to recurve because once it recurves, it sometimes accelerates in speed. Here you can see that uh, I have shown you some of the terms that we discussed before when we talked about the path and the track and the vortex and then the vortex. You can also see the dangerous semicircle, the navigable semicircle, the dangerous quadrant in the dangerous semicircle. So the dangerous semicircle will always be the semicircle towards which the TRS will recurve. So that's a dangerous semicircle and the leading front of the dangerous semicircle or dangerous semicircle is the dangerous quadrant. So you can see here, this is what is showing the erratic movement of a tropical storm. Now, of course, this is based on the historical movements of TRS, and that's why it can sometimes be generalized. But uh, like I have mentioned before, a movement of a tropical cyclone is very erratic. It's unpredictable, uh, although you can rely on the historical data, but you always should have a plan B when you are trying to take action to a, from a tropical cyclone, because you can assume that it will recurve, but sometimes it doesn't recurve and keeps continuing or sometimes after recovering it starts to speed up because of which sometimes your ship may get into trouble. So you have to make sure that you are keeping it well clear of such tropical cyclones and this is an area that I will cover in my next lecture. Uh, there are certain uh, warning signs of a TRS uh, and all available means must be used to determine the location and path of a TRS using weather charts, satellite images, weather reports and radio navigation warnings as well as storm warnings. Make sure that you uh, read the barometer and apply the appropriate corrections. Uh, for a precision aneroid barometer, this means correction of height above mean sea level, index error and diurnal variation of pressure. Compare the corrected reading with the mean pressure for the time of the year. If the corrected pressure is more than 3 hectapascals below normal, beware. If it is 5 hectapascals or more below normal, the vessel is probably on the outskirts of a system. Other warning signs include in the open sea a swell from the direction of the storm center and then we have a pressure that falls ahead of the trough and rises behind it. In terms of wind in both northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere for a stationary observer wind veers steadily in the right hand semicircle and wind backs steadily in the left hand semicircle. The angle of indraft at outer fringes about 45 degrees and gradually decreasing to 0 degrees in the eye wall. The temperature doesn't show much drastic changes. The visibility near center is poor with heavy rain and sprays and storm surges which are called mountainous waves can be noted due to the Ekman transport. Strong current results in storm surges in coastal areas. Cirrus clouds in outer fringes pointing towards the center are formed and cumulonimbus nimbus clouds are formed at the eye wall which gives torrential rain. Directly above the eye, a small patch of blue sky can be observed. In terms of warning signs, remember to refer to radio warnings. They are uh, 6 hourly if between 24 and 48 hours of distance. So if your vessel is uh, 24 or 48 hours away from the tropical cyclone in the center of the eye, then you will be getting 6 hourly weather reports and they are issued 3 hourly or hourly when under radar surveillance if expected to meet within 24 hours. So if your vessel is within the 24 hour meeting range, then you will have weather notices coming to you more frequently, sometimes three hourly, sometimes even hourly. Make sure that you refer to the ALRS or Admiralty List of Radio Signals Volume 3 to refer to the channels or the sources of weather information that you should be accessing to get information about the TRS. The TRS weather warning signs, uh, well, the cessation, there is a cessation of semi diurnal pressure. That means uh, uh, the pressure will not rise and fall. It will keep falling only. Uh, there is heavy swells, of course, and uh, there is changed wind direction and strength. Winds become stronger and the direction keeps on changing. Uh, unpredictable wind direction. And the clouds are, of course, like I said before, are serious and pointing and the relative humidity increases greater to about 75 percent and initially just before the storm there is unusual clarity of atmosphere with remarkable visibility and that is where the saying comes from a lull before the storm that means initially it is very calm and clear but then uh, the storm comes in with heavy precipitation 
and then of course the strong warnings are issued more regularly than what you would face in a normal condition uh, how the tropical cyclone starts to decay or die down well as the intensity decreases the surface temperature decreases and a typical lifespan of a tropical cyclone is about uh, a week or less than a week uh, the only record being the TRS John in 94, which lasted for about 31 days. Uh, the tropical cyclone starts to weaken rapidly when heat source is lost. So, for example, if the tropical cyclone on recurving or during its path reaches higher latitude where there are cooler waters, like I said before, the cooler waters uh, of anything less than 26.5 degrees Celsius do not provide a sufficient heat or temperature for the TRS to be fueled. Uh, sometimes the TRS uh, trans starts to transit in overland and because of which the water source is then removed, the moisture is gone, the latent heat is gone, the energy source is hence removed and the friction on the land decreases the surface winds causing central pressure to rise. Finally, if the cold water is stirred up, if in one place for too long and like I said, any cold temperatures, strong winds passing over land, if there is no cloud formation, all these are sources of heat that are provided to the TRS and then the TRS will die down rapidly. So. Um, like I said, if any strong winds come in as well, the TRS will break down because the TRS needs an organized system of thunderstorms with the latent heat contained within this organized system, which will keep fueling the TRS to move. Uh, otherwise, the TRS will decay. So I'll just leave the lecture here. Now it's becoming a bit long. And in my next lecture, I will teach you guys how to estimate the location and predict the movement of the, semis, uh, of the TRS as well as how to take evasive action uh, to avoid the TRS practically. Thanks.